JWST has released two new images of our biggest planetary neighbour Jupiter and the Jovian planet is looking good. We see loads of details in the waves and clouds that dominate Jupiter. We see bright emission from the aurora on the north and south poles. In this wide shot, we see some moons of Jupiter and its faint ring system. And as is traditional with web pictures at this point, faint galaxies in the background. In this close-up image, which was taken in July 2022 by Webb's NERCAM instrument and is actually a composite of several images, we see lots of vortices and eddies in the bright clouds that cover Jupiter. The great red spot here is really the great white spot. Here it's white, along with many of the other clouds and storm systems because it reflects so much sunlight. Remember that this feature is an enormous storm that's larger than the entire Earth and it tends to be one of the brightest things on Jupiter. Here, brightness indicates altitude, so we can see that the great spot has a lot of high altitude hazes overhead, the same as the bright region around the equator and the other various spots and streaks of white. Dark regions, such as this region on the north of the planet, have very little cloud cover, reflect less sunlight and we're seeing deeper into the planet. We also see the bright auroras extending to high altitudes over both poles, and these are largely powered by Jupiter's intense magnetic field, directing charged particles to hit Jupiter's atmosphere at the poles. Since Webb sees an infrared light that's invisible to us, keep in mind that this is really a false color image. It's guided by science though, as the longer wavelength light seen by Webb is mapped to redder colours and the shorter wavelength light is mapped to bluer colours. But this shifting does have to occur so that we can actually see the image at all. In particular, this image was processed by the Webb team alongside Judy Schmidt, who also posts loads of amazing Webb images on Twitter, including this incredible galaxy that Webb recently looked at. Apparently, Jupiter is an especially hard target to do the image processing for because it rotates so fast. A day on Jupiter is just 10 hours and given how big the planet is, this means it's spinning incredibly fast. So throughout successive images, the planet moves a noticeable amount and this needs to be taken care of to make these gorgeous images. You can actually see the great red spot has rotated from the close-up image we have here to this super cool wide shot we also got. This one also features two of Jupiter's tiny moons. They're named Amalthea and Adrastia, and I've never actually said those words out loud before, so apologies if that pronunciation is all wrong. Here, we also get a great view of Jupiter's faint ring system, which is usually impossible to see because these rings are about a million times fainter than the planet itself. If you look carefully, you can also see some fuzzy blobs in the lower left-hand side portion of the image. These are very likely to be galaxies in the distant background, poking through the darkness, but it's hard to see them clearly here. This is probably because the exposure time wasn't super long here, because Jupiter is so bright, but this means that the distant galaxies didn't quite have enough time to flex all of their finer details. We also see some diffraction spikes off the auroras here, with the southern ones being even more noticeable than the northern ones. There's also one spike from the outer frame moon Io, which is bright enough to still leak into the image here. On the south of the planet, the team has also given us the intriguing label of Io's footprint as part of the southern aurora. This is a cool effect that comes from the fact that Io is incredibly volcanically active. It continually spits out lava and all sorts of gases and dusts, some of which become electrically charged. This then gets caught up in Jupiter's magnetic field, causing lots of it to then rain down near the poles, causing emission when it hits the atmosphere, and this is a visible addition to the usual auroras. Here is a simulation of that aurora, where you can see the Io footprint and tail on the right just here. Thanks to James O'Donoghue for sharing this explanation and making it really easy to find this awesome simulation. Now it's up to the teams to continue to analyze all of the Webbian data from Jupiter and beyond, and I can't wait for them to share all of the things they learn with the rest of us. JWST will take observations that cover every part of cosmic history, and while the deep fields and distant objects can be incredibly exciting, sometimes these shots of our close neighbors can be even more thrilling to see. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.